For a long time now, I've been struggling to find a closed back headphone that I really love the way I love some open backs. And when I got my hands on the ZMF Atrium Closed here, I was really excited thinking I might have finally found the right headphone, but then maybe not so much. What I found when I first listened to these was they have treble that's just a little bit too bright, a little bit too aggressive at times. And in that regard, they're kind of like Verite Closed, where they're enjoyable, they're dynamic, but sometimes a bit fatiguing. Having said that, one of the beauties of ZMF headphones is that they work really well across a whole range of amps and also with all different pads. So come with me now on a bit of a journey to try to find out if the Atrium Close can be turned from a headphone that I think is just a little bit too dynamic and a little bit too energetic in the treble sometimes, into a headphone that might actually be very enjoyable with the right combination of pads and amplifiers. Atrium Closed, like the rest of ZMS flagship headphones, all come in at two and a half thousand US dollars. Sorry, I say flagship, I mean flagship dynamic headphones. There's also, of course, the Caldera Planar Magnetic, which I've reviewed just recently. But in terms of headphones using dynamic drivers, there's the Verite Open, Verite Closed, the Atrium Open, and now the Atrium Closed, all at two and a half thousand US dollars. Now, roughly the time that I'm recording this, there is a discount for pre-orders on these because they're a brand new model. So jump through to the ZMF website down below. Check that out if you want to grab these at a discount. But first, you might want to wait and see if I actually think they sound good. The other thing I'll mention is that I've got a link down below through to ZMF, but I've got no affiliation with them. In other words, I make no money if you buy these or you don't. Moving back around now to the design of the Atrium Closed, and just like the Atrium Open, these are using a 300 ohm dynamic driver. It's a biocellulous driver, meaning it's got almost like a, it's like a paper dome, but it's actually made with a biological grown material, which is biocellulose. And that driver has a sensitivity in this headphone of 96 decibels per milliwatt, making them fairly easy to drive. They're not the easiest dynamic driver on the market, but they're not particularly hard. That driver is housed in these lovely wooden cups, and I'm really a fan of the shape and also the wood that I've got here. I don't know, I think this is Sapel wood, but I'm not 100% sure. Either way though, I think they look beautiful. I love the new design of the cups compared to say, something like the Verite Closed, which is just a, almost a ball with a bit of contouring to it. These have got an angled shape to them where it's thinner at the front, it's a little bit thicker at the back, and I think they look really lovely. Attaching to those wooden cups, we've got these metal yokes. This is very standard for ZMF headphones if you've seen them before. We've got the rod here with the ratchet positions for the rest of the headband. Then you've got this lovely kind of machined magnesium or aluminium connector piece. And that's going to change the weight of these. So it's 480 grams with the aluminium chassis. I can't recall if the magnesium is lighter or heavier. I didn't put that in my notes, I'm sorry, but it is on the ZMF website. And these connector pieces here, those then connect to the headband. And as I've talked about in recent reviews, these are some of the most comfortable headphones on the market these days. They're right up there alongside headphones like the Meza Elites, Meza Imperians, etc. They're wonderfully comfortable. And that's in no small part to this combination headband where you've got the strap down the bottom here. This is just a nice thick and soft piece of leather. And then above that, you've got the headband with foam underneath. But the foam's actually got these crescents in it. It's got these little lumps. And those lumps help to distribute the weight across the headband more evenly and make for a very, very comfortable headband. And so all in all, I find the Atrium Close to be a very, very comfortable headphone, much like all the other current ZMF range. But then the final things to talk about in terms of design are that these come with Caldera pads. So you'll see here that they've got perforated outer edges. They've got a solid inner edge. And generally speaking, ZMF headphones like solid pads if they're closed. They like perforated pads if they're open. Unless it's the Caldera, that's a bit different. And then on the bottom of the cups, we've got the normal mini XLR connectors. So that's good news. You can use the same cables on these as you can on Meza headphones, for example, like the Elite and the Empyrean. And there's plenty of aftermarket options around. The same cables also for Audacy, I should mention. And so I think we've got a lovely looking closed back here. But as I said in the outro, when I first put them on, I did find them a little bit sharp in the treble. So let's talk a bit about that now. If you're trying to work out what piece of gear you should buy next, then the Passion for Sounds recommends database might be helpful for you. 
In the description box of every single video just down here, you'll find the Passion for Sounds Recommend section. If you click on this link, it'll take you through to the Passion for Sounds Recommend Airtable database. What you'll see in here is every single product that I've ever reviewed and recommend, in some cases products that I own but maybe haven't reviewed but recommend. And then once you're in here, you can use the filter button up here to decide to filter by things like whether or not the product type is for a headphone, for example. So maybe you're looking for a headphone. Filter it by that and you can now see every headphone I recommend. You can sort it by price, which is the default sorting or any other sorting method that you want. And then once you've got the list of products you're looking for, you've got the links to the reviews of the products and then also purchasing links for global retailers and also regional retailers for the US, Australia, Canada and the UK. So feel free to play around with this, sort it, filter it however you want to, it won't affect what anybody else sees and you can hopefully find just the right products for you. I hope this is helpful and now let's get back to the review. Starting off with the stock pads on these, which are the Caldera pads as I mentioned before. And I do like the sound in general from the Atrium Closed, but there's some extra treble energy which on my measurement rig shows up at about 8k. Whether it's exactly there or not, don't put too much weight into my measurements, they're on a non-professional level rig. But definitely what you can see in the measurements is that there's an extra bit of treble energy and that definitely comes through in the listening. Vocals from the Atrium Closed have a nice sense of presence and focus in the mix. There's a little bit of upper mid-range emphasis, but it's not too much in general. Having said that, with the stock pads, I do find that the treble and the upper mid emphasis does mean that it hasn't got quite as much body in those mids as I'd like. I'd like just a touch more. It's only a little bit, but I would like to see a touch more. And what that means is that when you listen between, say, male vocals and female vocals, female vocals that don't go as deep in the frequency response, those to me sound a bit better on the atrium closed than the male vocals do. Male vocals is where I tended to notice it was just missing a bit of that deeper resonance. It's not major, as I said, but it is a difference. I think bass weight on the atrium closed is excellent, it's solid, it's punchy, but it's not boomy or flabby in any way. And in my interview with Zach that I did some time ago, that's on the Passion for Sound podcast, he actually talked about the fact that he tuned these to be one of his very few headphones that actually has sub-bass presence. Often what Zach does is tune a headphone that rolls off into the sub-bass, that helps with things like staging and imaging etc. But in this case he's actually kept the sub-bass there and I think he's done it really well. The good news is it also hasn't hurt the staging in my opinion. It's worth noting that for some of you, particularly if you like something like say a Verite Open, the bass might be too much from the atrium closed. I don't see it as a bass monster headphone, but for those of you that like a leaner, more delicate sound like a Verite Open, you may find that the atrium closed does go a touch too far with the stock pads. And as I've already mentioned, a big part of that is the bass extension, which I would say is good for a dynamic driver. It's not some of the very best I've heard, but it is very good. Some of you, if you're coming from certain planar magnetic drivers in particular, you might be looking for that last little bit of extension all the way down to 20 hertz. These don't quite get there, there is still some roll off, but they're stronger in the sub bass region than other ZMF offerings, and that could be a really welcome thing for some of you. And so overall I'd say that their tonality is quite good. With the stock pads it's not perfect, there's a bit too much treble for me, they can get just a little bit fatiguing for me at times. And I do find that certain sounds from them, as I listen to a whole range of music, just certain sounds were just a little bit kind of incoherent, separated out from the mix, maybe lacking in a little bit of body. There were just a few holes somewhere in the frequency response for me that prevented these from being a completely natural listen across a wide range of music. I can't stress enough, they were never bad, but they didn't wow me, they didn't have me consistently loving them. I think out of the box, something like the Verite Closed is probably a little bit more of a consistently natural listen than the Atrium Closed. But having said that, we haven't talked yet about pad rolling. And that was really where I got to, was to work out, can I tweak these with the pads? Obviously we haven't ever seen a close back from ZMF with the Caldera pads before. So I thought, what if we go back to the standard pads? Is there something in there that's going to work? And we'll get to that in a moment. But before we do, let me cover off things like soundstage, technicalities, etc. And that is to say that I think things like detail retrieval, the sense of texture in the music is excellent at the price point. They're not going to compete with your absolute flagship headphones, but at the same time, around that two and a half thousand US dollar mark, it's going to be hard to beat them, at least in a dynamic driver close back. I also think the soundstage, as I already alluded to, is very good for close back. It's not massive. We're not talking DCA stealth levels of soundstage here, but they are very, very good. I also found that the separation and the layering of the sounds was very strong. And that leads me to talking about classical music, where I find these to be very, very good. They do a great job of giving you the sense of the layering of the different parts of the orchestra, so your strings in front, your woodwind behind, the brass behind that. They do that really well, and there's enough space, there's enough width and depth in the soundstage that they do a great job on classical. 
Their tonality also works well for that because I find that classical music generally performs well on headphones with a bit of extra treble. It helps to bring that sense of brightness and clarity to the orchestra. And some of my favorite listening with the atrium closed was actually on classical music. And so that's where I think if you are a classical music listener looking for a closed back headphone, even with the stock pads that I don't personally think are fantastic across the board, even with those, I think the atrium closed are brilliant for classical. For me, where the shortcoming lies is when you start to get over into other sorts of genres, things where you maybe want a bit more energy and drive across the whole frequency range, that's where I do start to find them struggle a little bit, at least with the stock pads for now. And that's because when I want to turn things up and really groove along with the music, the treble keeps coming too far forward, getting too aggressive, too energetic, and making me need to turn it back down again. And so whilst I've got the bass to carry a groove really well, that treble also comes out to bite from time to time and makes it a little bit less enjoyable. And so, as I said in the opening, let's talk about pad rolling to see if I could fix the atrium closed. To set myself a baseline, I used one track for all of this, and that's Green Eyes by Erica Badu. This is a nicely recorded track with a good range of kind of spatial information, a wide range of frequencies going on. And starting off with the stock Caldera pads, the bass from the atrium closed on this track was absolutely magic. I felt like the percussion was getting just a little bit aggressive, but it wasn't too bad on this track. And the piano sounded harmonic and resonant. So generally speaking, what I've described as the general sound quality, that's what I was hearing from this track. This track wasn't overly emphasizing the treble energy from the atriums, but it was still enough that I could hear that little bit of harshness and didn't feel as comfortable and relaxed as I'd like to while I was listening. Moving over then to the Universe Solid Pads, this is a solid leather pad. And what I heard from those was the treble was actually emphasized a bit more, but somehow smoother in its delivery. I don't know if there's a bit less reflection going on, so maybe there's a bit more energy, but not as much turbulence in the energy, I'm not sure. But the sound was just smoother and therefore easier to listen to, even though it was more enhanced. I think part of that is that the bass was also lifted a bit, and so that bass can help to offset the treble energy. And overall, I felt like the sound from the Universe Solid Pads was just a bit more coherent overall. Because it enhances the bass a bit, it's going to make it even more too much for some people. And as an example, there's a kick bass in this recording on the right hand side, and I could actually feel the kick bass against the side of my head, and it did get a bit distracting. So it wasn't a perfect option here, it still had some problems, but in some ways I think it was better than the standard pads. Moving then over to the Universe Suede pads, so again we've got solid pads, but this time made of suede. And I felt like those were even more coherent again. They just brought all the frequency response better into balance with one another, at least in the way it was presented. The suede pads softened the attack of the headphones slightly. That was a welcome thing because of that extra treble energy. And whilst it was still a bit treble focused overall, I felt like it was a more enjoyable listen with those suede pads. It's kind of like a gentle V-shaped sound with the suede pads on the atrium closed. And so, so far, I think the suede pads was what I was preferring the most. It wasn't perfect, but it was getting closer. Moving over then to the Caldera suede pad... So this is exactly the same as the stock pads on these, but made with suede instead of leather. And again, the suede helps to soften the attack. That's a standard thing that suede does. It also drops the bass slightly though, and that helps to balance out the mids a bit better, but it does mean your treble emphasis is more obvious because it's not being offset by the bass. And so I think these pads would work really well in certain genres, certain setups. So if you've got a smoother, warmer setup, or you're listening to genres where you want that sort of more mid-range treble focus, like say jazz, acoustic music, some classical music perhaps, that's where I could see those working well, but they weren't exactly my cup of tea. And so that's where I moved over to the Auto Hybrid. Now the Auto Hybrid perforated pads happen to be my favourite on the open atriums, but that didn't mean I expected it to be the same for these. These are a very different headphone to the open atriums. And yet what I found was that the Auto Hybrid solid pads were a really good fit on the atrium closed for me. It helped to bring forward the mid-range balance a bit better. That brought more presence to things like vocals. Again, it does increase the deep bass a little bit, which could be too much for some people, but I personally enjoy it. And what was most impressive to me was that the percussion sounds just right. Something about the balance of tonalities from the auto hybrid pads really just helps the overall tonal balance of the atrium closed to just become a bit more natural, a bit more coherent across the board. Now I should be clear here, it's not as though it's going to completely transform these headphones. If you have a listen to these and you really don't like them with their stock pads, I wouldn't recommend going down this path. But if you have a listen to them and you're like me where you go, yes, I can see that they're good, but they're not quite right, that's where you start rolling pads, try some of the ones I've suggested and see what you find. And on that note, I think all of the pads that I tried could work for different people and different setups. For example, if you do like a more sort of leaner, slightly more mid-range and treble focused sound, then that's where the Caldera Suede could be really good. 
but maybe you like a bit more of a dynamic and bass oriented sound, that's where the Universe Solid Pads could be better for you. So it is going to come down to personal taste. Where I've landed with these, and I haven't got them on here at the moment, but where I've landed with these and what I'll be going back to for as long as I have these headphones here, is that I will be using the Auteur Hybrid Solid Pads. That for me is the best balance of the warmth and richness in terms of the bass presence, a little bit more mid-range presence than the stock pads, and then also just rebalancing the treble a little bit to make it sound a bit more natural overall. So that's my personal recommendation. Unfortunately, you're going to have to work out what works best with you, your ears, your preferences, your genres of music you listen to. But hopefully those pad rolling suggestions have helped you find an option or a couple of options that you might like to try. From there though, there's a couple of other things I thought I might share with you just to help you decide if these are the right headphones for you. Because as you've probably already gathered, this is not a resounding recommendation for the Atrium Closed. I like them. I think they're one of the better closebacks that I've tried, but as is always the case it seems with closebacks, there's always a trade-off, and that's true here as well. And so a part of it for me is finding which is the right combination of amplification and a headphone like this, what's going to offset their weaknesses and bring forward their strengths better, and so I did a bit of amp rolling as well. Now I should quickly mention when I looked at my notes then, I'd forgotten to mention the fact that I did also try the Caldera Thick Pads. These are actually in use on my Calderas, so it was a very quick listen I did with the Atrium Closed. But what I heard when I tried them was another very good sound. So if you happen to have yourself a pair of Calderas and you're looking for clothes back, if you do decide on the Atrium Closed, check out your Caldera Thick Pads if you bought some on the Atrium Closed too. The sound they gave me was somewhat similar to the Auto Hybrids. It maybe doesn't lift the bass quite so much, but it did help to improve the mid-range and treble quality a little bit. And so with that little note out of the way, sorry that I missed it the first time around, let's now talk about amp rolling. I'm in the fortunate position of having a whole bunch of different amps here on my desk at the moment, and so I moved through four different amps that I thought might be a good fit. And specifically, what I was looking for was an amplifier that was going to help to kind of tame that top end just a little bit, smooth it out without losing texture and detail, of course. And so I lent to amplifiers that I know to be kind of less dry, less sort of neutral or lean, and a little bit more sort of warmer or smoother sounding. The first one I reached for was the Enlium Amp 23R. This thing's an absolute beast and I love it, but I have to say it wasn't the best pairing with the Atrium Closed. The Amp 23R does have an interesting sense of attack in the upper mid-range, and I didn't think that it paired particularly well with the Atrium Closed. It was almost like both of them have a little bit of that going for themselves, and then when you pair them together, it just all becomes a bit much. It still sounded great, I should add, but it wasn't my preference. Surprisingly, when I did try the TT2, which is quite a dry and neutral amp, I thought it sounded excellent. And it's probably because there's no real point of emphasis from the TT2. Everything's very balanced, very neutral, and that seemed to work well with the Atrium Closed. But again, it wasn't my favourite. Moving over to the shit Volkfanger, which I absolutely adore with the Atrium Open. It's my favourite all-time pairing of an amp and a headphone. Moving over to that, the sound was definitely excellent. But it didn't capture the same magic that I get with the Atrium Open and the Volkfanger. If you have a Volkfanger, the Atrium Closed will sound great on it. But if you were to say to me, what's the ultimate pairing of the Atrium Closed and an amplifier, the answer I'd actually give you is the Linear Tube Audio MZ3 Tube Amp. That combination is nothing short of heavenly. With the Atrium Closed, a pair of Auto Hybrid Solid Pads and the MZ3, the listening experience was absolutely sublime. At one point in my pre-review listening, when I was just kind of enjoying them as background listening, what I was listening to at one stage was some Mozart Church sonatas, and they were playing through the Shit Yggdrasil OG into the Folkvanger, and then into the Auteur Closed, actually at the time using the suede pads. And I think from memory that was the Caldera suede pads. And the listening experience was just magical. These are a really beautiful headphone for classical. I know I said that before, but I think it deserves repeating. If you're looking for a close back for classical listening, I absolutely think these are brilliant, and particularly what I've found, they work wonderfully well with tube amps, as do most ZMF headphones. And so if you're looking at potentially buying a pair of these, then I would say get yourself a tube amp to go with them, or buy them knowing that you've got a tube amp already, because that's where the magic lies for me. That's where the transformation came from me thinking they're good, but they're compromised, to me thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying them. But before I wrap things up there, I always like to provide a comparison point. I like people to be able to have another headphone that they've heard, that they understand, to be able to kind of compare directly to whatever I'm reviewing. Now unfortunately I don't have the Verite closed here, I had to send those back over to ZMF, and I also don't have any other equivalent closed backs. So the nearest thing I had that I think many of you will have heard, either by owning them or at a show, was the Atrium Open. 
it seemed to make sense to compare those two because many people that love the atrium might be thinking about these. And so I plugged both of them in separately, of course, at different times to the Linear Tube Audio MZ3 Tube Amp that I've already mentioned. And one of the tracks I listened to was Plans by Birds of Tokyo. And the first thing I'd say was that with the particular setup, again, I think it was the Iggy OG as the DAC, the MZ3 as the Tube Amp and the Atrium Closed, everything sounded just right. I actually had a hard time taking notes because nothing stood out to me. And I mean that in the best possible way. The music was just how it should be. It was enjoyable. It was natural. It was easy to listen to. As I really forced myself to write some more notes, the things I was able to focus on is that I think the vocal was very well positioned. It had a good sense of presence and location in space. And there was a really good sense of rhythm and drive in this track from the atrium closed. Flipping over to the atrium open, and as is often the way when you flip between headphones, at first they actually sounded a little bit boxy in comparison. Now that soon changed as my brain adjusted to the different tuning of them, but it was interesting to hear just how different these two headphones are. The sound from the atrium open is what I would call a richer sound, and that's because it's got more mid-range, sort of that upper bass mid-range presence, it's got more of that. So it does come across richer and smoother, whereas these lean a bit more into the sort of a V-shaped-ish sound, they've got a little bit more of a dynamic sense to them, whereas the atrium open is an easier, smoother listening experience. Something that additional mid-range focus brings though with the atrium open is that the vocals became even more focused and more present. So for those looking for a really vocal focused headphone, these might not be it. It does give you more of that V-shaped feel. It does push the vocals back a little bit in the mix. And I mean that more in terms of the presence in the mix, not so much the positioning in the soundstage. But if you're just looking for a good close back and you're happy to have something that's a bit different from the atrium open, then I do think the atrium closed have kind of won me over. To summarize my experience of the two, the atrium open and the atrium closed, the atrium open is a more mid-range experience. And so really what I'd say at the end of this is that I think both atriums are fantastic. The atrium closed doesn't reach the heights of the atrium open for me. The atrium open is still all time one of my favorite headphones to listen to. It's not the most technically capable or most amazingly spectacular headphone, but it just offers hours and hours of endless musical enjoyment. And that for me is what makes them special. As for the atrium closed, I think it's a headphone that I will recommend. It's not getting a resounding recommendation, which so far to this stage, I don't think any close back has from me. Whether it's the HD820, whether it's the Veritate Closed, even the DCA Stealth, there's lots of great close back headphones out there, but all of them have slight problems. So it's really a matter of finding the headphone that has the right trade-offs to suit your tastes. And that's where I think for me, the Atrium Closed probably comes the closest. Once I tried the pad rolling and settled on the Auto Hybrid Pads, that being the solid version, I do think these rounded into a headphone that I would call the best close back I've tried, but that's for my tastes. That doesn't mean it's the best close back for everybody. I think there's plenty of people out there that will say the DCA Stealth is the best, and I'd completely understand that. There'll be others that will say the Verite Closed is the best, and I'd get that too. So if you're in the market for a closed back, and you've heard what I've said today, and maybe you're on the fence and you're thinking, this isn't quite the right one for you, then I would recommend checking out my reviews of the Verite Closed, the DCA Stealth, and maybe even the Sennheiser HD820. All of them have great things going for them. None of them are quite perfect. And so I'm going to wrap this up here by saying that I think the Atrium Closed are lovely. I think the design is absolutely brilliant. I like them better than the Verite Closed from an aesthetic point of view. And sonically, I do like them just a little bit more as well. I think they need a bit of tuning with the right pads and the right amp. But once you get that match right, they're a very rewarding headphone. And if you're a classical listener, then I almost would say go no further. Unless you can spend a lot more and get something like a DCA Stealth, that's a bit of a different story. But if you're talking in that $2,500 range, where you're looking at things like a Verite Closed, you're looking at the Sennheiser HD820 that I mentioned before, I think in that range for classical music, these are absolutely spectacular. So hopefully I've been able to give you a good sense of whether these are a good fit for you, which pads might be a good fit for you, because when you buy them on the ZMF website, you can choose a second set of pads to come with them. So hopefully I've clarified all of that for you. If I have, if the video has been useful, helpful, etc., I'd love it as always if you'd hit the like button and consider subscribing and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. But for now, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.